Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. Mm, today, I am feeling um, like heaven on earth, like really peaceful. And yesterday, I was feeling a lot of resistance. So how can I keep that flow state every day? Uh, Eileen, um, that's what this meditation is all about. You know, in order to maintain that kind of flow, as you say, that heaven on earth kind of feeling, I mean, you have to build a system inside yourself over time that's strong enough to do it. Otherwise, we move in and out of heaven and hell very easily. You know, it's just the nature of energy, how it manifests on the earth on so much of what we see, almost all of what we see is a reflection of the mind, of conflict, of heaven and hell, of right and wrong, good and bad, you know. And in order to overcome that, so that your life has, you know, it's, there's a steadiness there, of openness. You know, it takes time and work and building that kind of system inside yourself that can do it. Obviously, it's not done by just people getting up in the morning. And if it was, there wouldn't be so much craziness in the world. But that has nothing to do with you and me. It has to do with people who refuse to recognize that in order to overcome the craziness in the world, the tension in the world they've got to work on themselves and then they have to have patience because it doesn't take 10 class it takes time to truly build that kind of system and as i say a lot you know i mean you talk to artists that are real artists and they'll tell you that you know it took 20 years of working on their art to begin to develop the capacity to be a great artist in the Renaissance, people would, you know, go into a great master's studio when they were five years old. And they would train in every conceivable aspect of painting or sculpture until eventually they became masters themselves. This is no different. You know, this is learning over time, having patience and truly developing over time a system inside that's strong enough to keep yourself from getting involved in both positive and negative. You know, that it's all just energy and you take it in as energy and use it to grow in your life instead of getting swept away into a few negative things that take place during the day. Or if you lose control of your mind and your emotions and you're depressed and this and that, all right, I got to work on myself. I need to work on myself. And this is an important thing to learn because in time, you understand, one becomes a master of their inner life. And then if it's positive, it's negative, you, you, know, you just don't get involved. You understand that everything is just energy. It's only positive or negative because we see it that way. It's just energy. You know, a human being open, you know, energy flows from the cosmos into a human being. You know, the energy is pure. It's not positive or negative. Once it goes into a person, depending upon, you know, uh, their inner and spiritual development, the energy, energy manifests in their life as positive or negative, because that's what goes on inside them. So it's a matter of time and change and doing what's essential to build a system inside oneself that's strong enough to allow the purity of Shakti, of energy to flow through us and guide our lives without our minds, our emotions, our tension, our insecurity, getting in the way. So I can't say it enough. You know, you want to be a great musician. You, 
I always used to use the example, I think it was Otto Horowitz, I think his name was, or Rubenstein, one of these great pianists. I went to see them at Carnegie Hall and the guy would touch a note and the whole hall would fill up with music, just one note. And I would say, how does he do that? You know, nine, 10 hours a day of practice over 25 years. <laughs> he became a master that he, one note fills a concert hall with music. So have patience and do your inner work. And I promise you, it comes. It came to me. And I honestly can say I was probably twice as screwed up as anybody sitting here right now when I was younger. I mean that. Dang, it came because I... <laughs> as you mature into your spiritual practice, you begin to learn about things. And you stop all this crap in your head and, you know, you just, okay, I got to grow. I got to work on myself. I hope it's clear what I'm talking about, because I think it's a very important element in what I teach. People come and do this and they think in three, five classes, they're going to get their spiritual enlightenment. And I get that question all the time. You know, how come I, I depressed today? I'm unhappy. It just takes time to become a master of something. And without investing the time, all we have is ourselves and all the bullshit that runs around in us, you know, unhappiness, depression, all that nonsense, you know, this is what we have to live with every day. And then you got to do whatever you have to do to get it, because it doesn't just happen. Your actions, your activity, what you do, how you invest your time is what makes a mastery of your inner self possible. If you're sitting there and waiting for it to happen for you, forget about it, you know? You're going to wait about 100 lifetimes for it to happen. You've got to do whatever and if you open inside, the universe will tell you what you have to do. I really mean this. God will tell you. There's a voice in every one of us that speaks the truth. But if you're sitting there waiting for your enlightenment, you're going to have a very long wait. I mean, it. but in 150,000 lifetimes, and still might not get it if you're sitting there and waiting for it to happen. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? I mean, I had to learn all this from my own teacher who made me realize that uh, my activity, the investment of my time, what I do with my energy, you know, makes something work. The one pointedness of it to build an inner life that allows my heart to stay open and to be love inside me 
and to do this work, you know? There's one person here, I will sit and do the work. There's a hundred people there, I'll sit and do the work. And I do it because I need it to grow. And I never assume I've ever arrived. That's the worst thing to do, the assumption that you have arrived. It's the end of your life. It helps one overcome fear, insecurity, doubt. One learns to trust life. That life is a teacher, as I say all the time, and one begins to trust it. Let it teach us how to actively get involved in life so that we can use situations manifest for us that are manifested for us to grow spiritually. Does anyone else have a question? It takes a very strong person to trust life. But that strength can be built inside a human being through proper use of mind, you know, breath, will, need, that internal strength to be built in a person. And as I've said before, you know, look, in every lifetime, we're allotted a certain amount of time. We're given by the universe. Here's, you know, 50 years, 20 years, 100 years to build a connection with God. And if we don't take advantage of it, and it's all bullshit, you know? It's just wasting the preciousness of time and energy and life, you know, for something in our brain that says, well, I don't have to do anything. It'll just happen for me. You know, one doesn't get neurotic over it, but time is precious. You know, I've seen a lot of people this year get sick and, you know, people, you know, died and time is precious. And it really depends upon how we consciously use it. It's really true, you know. It's a gift. It's an extraordinary gift, life. How do we use it? We use it to beat ourselves up, to be unhappy, to be depressed, to be angry, or do we use it to find God, to build a system inside that is strong enough to open to a higher force in the universe? And to recognize what needs to be invested in time and energy to do this kind of thing, that it doesn't just happen. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Tim, Bob Sink. Yes, Paul. Um, with so many people um, that are getting ill and sick, um, there's a part of the mind that says, uh, am, I, am I doing something wrong? Um, uh, how to be in relationship with this turn of events uh, as, as far as uh, a lot of people getting sick or uh, uh, changing. 
Well, you know, uh, I, Bob, I don't think you're doing anything wrong. I don't think you have anything to be guilt. Where you know, there you are. You have anything to be guilty of? Anything of that nature? You just have to deal with what life brings. Use it to grow instead of I'm doing something wrong. I did something wrong in my past life. I mean, you know, whatever takes place. You have to use to grow spiritually. Whatever takes place in your life has to be used that way. And we get sick, we get, I mean, I've been sick. I've had two operations in the last bunch of years, you know? But every one of them was an opportunity for me to grow. You know, I was in a hospital, I'll never forget it, in Miami, and I, and I was very, I mean, I was in enormous pain, enormous pain. And I said to the nurse there, can I see a doctor? Well, you won't be able to see a doctor until Monday morning at six o'clock. You know, and that weekend, I thought I was going to die that weekend. I really did. I was in so much pain. I used it to grow. I didn't get, well, what did I do in my past life to bring this on my, who cares? What can I do with this to get closer to God, to get closer to my spiritual enlightenment? That builds inner strength. That brings wisdom. That brings knowledge. And it brings foundation and deep inner growth that enables you to deal with anything that takes place in your life. Not sitting around thinking, well, what did I do, you know, two lifetimes ago to bring this on myself? Who cares? The important thing is to use whatever takes place in your life as a reason to get closer to God, to get your spiritual enlightenment. I mean, I don't know, you know, I mean, I have an enormous amount of respect for you both for what you have done with the situation that's taken place in your life. I've seen you grow more in the last six months than almost all the time I can remember being with you. Taking a difficult situation and making it work for you. God bless you. You've done an incredible job. So don't get involved in, I did something wrong. I, who cares? You know? Get involved with what can I do to continue to grow and deal with this situation that's in my life? And how can I use it to get my spiritual enlightenment? Thank you, Stuart. You're welcome, Bob. Just keep working on yourself. You're doing well. And I know you're going to get lapsed into all this kind of nonsense, you know? But you're doing really well. You look, in a, in a sense, more open than I've ever seen you look for. So keep working on yourself. It's working. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Hi, Stuart. I have a question. Yes. Um, my question is, why should we put an intention to grow? Why can't we just grow naturally like plants and like flowers? Uh, listen, dear. <laughs> uh, that why is a crooked letter. You know, look, I don't understand why. All I know is I've never met a person in my life who doesn't have to work on themselves to get their hearts open. It's just the nature of, you know, it's like, you know, we're born here. I'm just writing about this, frankly, you know? Uh, in my, one of my tantric, I'm on Tantra 95, you know? I mean, uh, I, I, I write that we're born these beautiful, innocent babies full of love and sweetness. Nobody can take their eyes off of us. You know, they come near us and everybody wants to hug us and kiss us and, you know, throw us up in the air and bring us to their heart. You know, so that's how we're born. Where did you go to? You disappeared. Oh, there you are. And, and 
then we're, we're trained, we're taught how to live in this world. And by the time we're four and five years old, it's all gone. So the work of meditation, the work of inner work is regaining the innocence we were born with. It's like in the Bible, you know, Adam and Eve leave the Garden of Eden mm -hmm. with knowledge. They have learned to have knowledge. They use their minds. They went from a state of total innocence and pure beauty into the world of the rest of the Bible. Everybody doing whatever they can to find the Messiah. Mm -hmm. It's paradise lost and paradise regained. And the whole education of life is to permanently regain paradise, to get one's heart open, to learn how to love, how to be grateful, how to recognize that life is a sacred thing. Why? I have no idea. All I know is it's what goes on here. It's paradise lost, and then the education of life to regain a oneness with God, which is permanent. We have learned how to transform suffering and difficulty to an open heart. And instead of wondering why I am going through this, and use it. It's like Rudy said, you know, he, I'll never forget it. He's either suffer like a schmuck or you suffer consciously. One way or the other, people are going to suffer in life. So either you use it consciously to grow and get close to God, or you it just you suffer. It's like the Buddha said, the fastest path to, to, to enlightenment is suffering. And it's really true. It's life. Life is going through all that. Learning how to transform it into love. Into openness. Building a system inside that can trans and going from paradise lost to paradise regained. As a permanent reality. And then there's no why about all this. I, I, I think I mentioned it a, a few weeks ago. I, I once had a painting, wonderful painting, Japanese uh, Zen painter, and it was a staff. That's all it was, a staff, with calligraphy on each side of the staff. And what it said is, you know, those that are on the path get hit with this staff, and those that are not on the path get hit with this staff, you know? And I, I, I mean, it was such an extraordinary lesson for me to be able to see that painting every day and to know what the calligraphy meant and how my living and my life has to be about, you know, not complaining about being hit with the staff, but using it to get one's enlightenment. So I sold that painting to a very famous movie star who really needed that painting. <laughs> he came and he said, he said, yes, I need that. You know, I need that. And being hit with the staff without doing anything to transform it into a spiritual life. And everybody's hit with that staff. Celebrities and people that are not celebrities. Everybody. Look in the eyes of any human being and you can see that part of them that is suffering. Now it's whether or not they're using it to grow. Can you transform it into love? That takes time and patience and a lot of work on oneself. So. 
Does anyone else have a question who would like to ask? Okay, if there are no more questions, God bless you all for being here, part of this. I mean, I even listen to the things I say because it's not me talking, it's a higher force that comes through. And it educates me. And I'm very grateful for the presence of each and every one of you because it really allows that force to manifest and not only teach you, but hopefully it's teaching me as well. So God bless you all. And there'll be a class tomorrow evening. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Good night, Stuart. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.